Hi everybody and you're very welcome as usual to our Los Angeles English School YouTube channel. If you don't know me yet, my name is Helen, I'm head teacher here and I am very happy to welcome you uh, in today's lesson. So today we're going to talk about TOEFL and specifically TOEFL speaking task number three. So if you are getting ready for TOEFL, this is what you really need. Um, and if you'd like just to practice English, you're also very welcome because it's very useful just for um, your English practice as well. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, of course, if you'd like to get notified of all our upcoming lessons. All right, so um, today we're going to talk, as I said, about speaking task number three. I would like to mention um, so that earlier there used to be six speaking sections, six speaking tasks in the speaking section for TOEFL, but it was earlier and recently things have changed and now there are four speaking tasks. Today we're going to speak about task number three. Let's take a look at this together. All right, guys, so um, speaking uh, task number three, this is the integrated speaking uh, task. What does it mean? If it's integrated, it means that you will hear something and you will read something and you will have to integrate the information in your speaking. So for speaking uh, task number three, you will first read the text and then you will hear the lecture. So let's go over the task together. So here we have directions. So this task requires you first to read a passage of about 100 words. You will be given 45 seconds to read. And here I'd like to stop for a sec because it's really important to mention that you will have only 45 seconds and the text will disappear. So make sure to take really good notes because you will have to talk about what you've read. So you have to write down as much information as possible, but of course, don't forget to use abbreviations. Um, make sure that you are prepared for this and you practice taking notes. This is a very important skill for TOEFL. Then you will listen to a short lecture. The reading and the lecture topics are based on academic fields of study such as the sciences, literature, history or language. 
Then you'll see and hear a question. You will be given 30 seconds to prepare your response. So 30 seconds, whoa, it's not a lot. And then 60 seconds to speak. In the question, you will be asked to summarize and connect the information from both the reading and the lecture. That is why uh, taking notes is uh, the essential skill for TOEFL. So make sure that you take notes both on reading and take notes on lecture. And here you need to write as much as possible. So uh, because then you will integrate this information. So now let's take a look at some information um, that you will find in the reading and like what exactly you will need to do, how to integrate reading and listening. So the reading passage will provide general information such as definition, a theory, process or a problem. So this is what you will uh, read in the passage. The lecture, on the other hand, will give specific examples. So how they are going to be connected. Again, the reading in the reading there will be general information, maybe the problem, um, some environmental problems or business problems or educational problems. Maybe they will look at a theory or some methods. And the lecture will give specific examples how it works. And there are also different options. So maybe the lecture will expand on or support the topic of the reading passage. This is the first option. Maybe it will contradict or disagree with the reading topic or illustrate how the general reading topic can be specifically applied or maybe explain how a problem was successfully or unsuccessfully solved. So, or maybe also like how to solve the problem presented in the reading. So this is the general information. Oops. And now let's move on to uh, the text. So again, a reminder, you'll have 45 seconds to read the text. So now we're going to read this text together because we need to analyze Oh, the text and first I'll help you. So this is what you may see during the exam. So let's read it together. Plastic bags represent a significant threat to the environment, humans and animals. It is estimated that somewhere between 500 billion and a trillion plastic bags are used worldwide each year. It takes a great deal of precious non-renewable resources such as oil and natural gas to produce them. In addition, plastic bags are not biodegradable, meaning they do not readily break down. The result is an excessive buildup when they are dumped in landfills or harmful air pollution if they are burned. The bags contain toxic chemicals that can leak into the soil and water, creating serious health risks for both animals and humans. Likewise, animals accidentally eat the bags, making them sick or even killing them. So I don't think that it's hard uh, to understand this particular text. So what you need to do is you read the text and you take notes on most important things. So guys, first what I'd like you to do is take a moment and uh, just try to take some notes on this text. So what information would you include in your notes? So I'll, I give you a second to think about it. And also you can type in the chat box. So what are the main points of the reading? So take some time.
All right, guys, so let's summarize the main things together. So here we can underline that we're talking about plastic bags. <laughs> Definitely, this is the main idea. So then there are different key points that you have to take notes on is uh, this is a significant threat to the environment, humans and animals. So you can write down plastic bags, threat to environment, humans, animals. And of course, you need to make the, the uh, short versions of the words. So, but make sure that you write abbreviations, then, then you will be able to understand. Um, then we have here a great deal of precious non-renewable resources, such as oil and gas, to produce them. So uh, it takes a lot of um, important non-renewable resources. So non-renewable, if you don't know, it's resources that don't come again. So we are not talking about wind or sunlight. We think about oil and gas. So this is the next important point. The next we have here information that plastic bags are not biodegradable. So this is also one important feature. So they don't break up. Um, then we have air pollution because of this and toxic chemicals. And uh, these toxic chemicals, they pollute soil and water. And uh, there are risks for animals, animals and uh, humans. So these are key important features that you have to pay attention to. Yeah, and this is what you need to take notes on. Then based on your notes, you will be talking. And in your speech first, you will need to say um, what the text told you. But of course, it's very important that you take notes, but then you just don't read what you have written, but you need to paraphrase it. Um, you need to say it in your own words. And here is my example. So this is what you might say. The general information in the reading is about the problems that plastic bags cause for people, animals, and our Earth. According to the passage, they're bad because they use lots of valuable resources. The author also says they cause pollution for the land, water, and air, as they don't break down and contain dangerous chemicals. These substances can also make people sick or can even kill animals if they eat the bags. So this is what you can say. Um, here pay attention that we need to use some phrases like the general information in the reading is, according to the passage, the author also says. So these are good transitional phrases. You have to bear in mind to use them. And you need to state exactly what the information you're talking about. What is the information you're talking about? Sorry. So is it from the text or it's from um, listening? So this is what you need to say about the text. Let's move on to the next part. So then the text will disappear and you will hear the lecture on the same topic. Um, as I mentioned before, maybe we had a problem, plastic bags. Uh, the lecture may present the solutions to the problem. Maybe the lecturer will contradict this information. Maybe the lecturer will say that actually there is no problem. Um, maybe we'll give some specific examples of this. So now what I'd like you to do, I want you to listen to this lecture first and actually try to work with me now, try to prepare for your TOEFL and take notes, take as much notes, um, as many notes as possible. Um, and also you need to tell me whether the lecturer is giving solutions to the problem or maybe the lecturer disagrees with those problems or maybe gives, gives specific examples. So let's listen, take good notes and um, try to understand the connection between the reading and the lecture. So let's get started. Now listen to part of a lecture on this topic in an environmental studies class.
We're hearing more and more about how various countries and cities have taken on the challenge of getting rid of, or at least cutting down on, the use of plastic bags. Ireland and South Africa, to name just a couple, came up with the clever idea of trying to encourage people to bring their own bags by charging a small fee for the plastic bags provided by grocery stores and shops. In Ireland, for example, where there is a 22 cent tax on plastic bags, their use has decreased by 90% since 2002. And cities like San Francisco, California have banned their use outright. Large grocery store chains and some pharmacies are no longer allowed to use them and must now bag items in recyclable paper bags. Some even ask their customers to bring plastic bags back to the store so that they can be recycled into new plastic bags or into other types of building materials. However, many feel that the answer is neither plastic bags nor paper bags, but rather canvas or cloth bags that can be used over a much longer period of time and are biodegradable. In fact, the California bag recycling law adds further motivation for consumers to stop accepting even paper bags by requiring stores to sell reusable cloth bags. Alrighty guys, so now I'd like you to type in the chat box and just to think if you want to, um, what is the connection between the reading passage and the lecture? Um, is it the solution to the problem? Is it the disagreement or maybe some examples? So what do you think? So guys, the lecturer um, gives the solutions to the problem and how these solutions are already being implemented in different countries. Uh, the next step that we will do with you is we will take a look at the uh, audio script and here we have the stacks that you heard. So let's analyze the main things. Uh, the lecturer gave a few exam examples. Yeah, Andrew, so actually we had examples of how to solve yeah, the problems. And um, here let's take a look at this uh, script and we will highlight key things or key points that the lecturer um, said about. So here we have um, the first, Ireland, and South Africa. This is the first example. So what they did, they encourage people to bring their own bags by charging a small fee for the plastic bags provided by grocery stores and shops. So the next thing is that in Ireland, the use of plastic bags has decreased by 90%. So then uh, we can look at California and there they banned the use of plastic bags completely. So some even ask their customers to bring plastic bags back to the store so that they can be recycled. Then the next, it's better to use canvas or cloth bags um, instead of plastic bags. And the California bag recycling law uh, wants to stop people using paper bags. Um, and they want to replace them by reusable cloth bags. So these are key points from the lecture. And you gotta be able to take really good notes on these points. So let's move on to the next part. So this is uh, the question. So you will read the passage, then you will hear the lecture, and then you will see and you will hear a question. Explain how the examples discussed by the professor relate to the environmental impact of plastic bags. So a reminder, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and one minute to talk. 
this is my sample answer. So let's take a look at the um, summary of the reading passage. So I've already read this for you. Let's go on. Let's read it again. The general information in the reading is about the problems that plastic bags cause for people, animals, and our Earth. According to the passage, they're bad because they use lots of valuable resources. The author also says that cause, they cause pollution for the land, water, and air as they don't break down and contain dangerous chemicals. These substances can also make people sick or can even kill animals if they eat the bags. Now we need to summarize the lecture and connect uh, it to the reading. So the lecture presents specific solutions for using fewer plastic bags. The professor mentions one example in Ireland where they have a tax on plastic bags and now people there use 90% fewer. She goes on to add that in California, one city does not allow any plastic bags in some of its stores and some will even take back customers' bags to recycle. But the professor feels the best solution is to use cloth bags that are biodegradable. She explains that in California, a law helps a California law helps stop the use of plastic bags by making stores sell cloth bags that people can use for a longer time. So this is my sample response and uh, it's, it's enough for a minute. Again, you summarize the information from the reading, then you connect it to the lecture. And here also I have used some words to show that um, now I'm referring to the lecture. So the lecture presents, the professor mentions, she goes on to add, but the professor feels, she explains that. So make sure to use these transitional phrases. So now I will give you a few more expressions and words that you can use in your response. So the first, um, the reading lecture or lecture discusses, presents, defines, explains. In addition, it is stated in the passage that, according to the reading or according to the lecture, the professor talks about, discussed in the text, according to the lecture, the solution to the problem explained in the reading is, the professor goes on to say that or adds that, like, similar to the, discussed in the reading, the lecture states that, also, I have some expressions when the lecturer doesn't agree with the statement uh, made in the reading. So then in this case, you can use some words like unlike, in contrast to, mentioned in the reading, the professor says that, the lecturer casts doubt on the claim presented in the text that, the lecturer counters this point by saying that, the lecturer refutes the claim that, explaining that. So these are the words and expressions that you can use in your response. But first, make sure to understand um, the connection between the reading and the lecture. So make sure that you understand whether the lecturer gives examples, the lecturer refutes the claim made in the reading, uh, or maybe the lecturer gives solution. And based on this, you can choose the words that fit for your response. All right, so let's take a look at response tips that I'd like to give you. So make sure to take good notes. It's essential for all integrated speaking sections, you got to be ready to take really good notes. So make sure to take good notes on the main idea of the reading and as much supporting information as you have time to note. Listen carefully to the lecture and take brief notes on the main ideas or points about the specific information from the reading. Ask yourself how the lecture relates to the reading. Does it give further information about the reading? Does it contradict it or does it apply it in some way or offer a solution? 
Be sure you include a responsible amount, a reasonable, sorry, amount of information from both the reading and lecture in your response. Always clearly indicate which source, the reading or the lecture, the information you're given is coming from. Develop a logical flow of information by using the appropriate transitions. And when you give your answer, it's important not to sound as if you're reading exactly the same sentences or phrases that are used in the text or heard in the lecture. So you need to paraphrase as much as possible by using different words and grammatical structures in your response. So these are tips that you need to bear in mind. Please don't forget about them. All right, and also I have evaluation criteria for this specific task. As for all other speaking tasks, we have the same evaluation, um, not criteria, but the same band scores. So you can see you have, you can get a maximum four points and then um, it will be converted into maximum 30 points. So now the evaluation criteria. The first, delivery. So your speech should be clear and fluid. You need to make sure that you pay attention to your pronunciation. You speak at a natural pace and with good intonation. Language use. So make sure that you use good grammar and vocabulary to express your ideas. And uh, the last but not least, task response. How you understood the reading and the lecture how you integrated the information from the reading passage and the lecture using appropriate signal words and expressions. And the uh, reader will also see if you avoided stating your opinion or adding information that was not included in the reading or lecture. So this is one uh, point which I actually forgot to mention. Uh, don't give your opinion. So you just need to integrate the reading and speaking in your, the reading, I'm sorry, and listening in your answer and talk about the information that you've read or heard. Um, don't say what you think about it. All right. So these are the evaluation criteria. All right, and as usual, I really like to give you opportunity to practice. And now we're going to take a look at how it's going to um, look like uh, on the real test. And I want you to get ready. If you want, you can do it right now with me, or you can then watch this video one more time and try to do it on your own as we finish. So now we'll take a look at the real simple question and I want you to try and practice this, okay? So just a moment, I need to open it for you. In this question, you will read a short passage about a campus situation and then listen to a conversation on the same topic. Now, the man express. Please begin speaking after the beep. Please listen carefully. In this question, you will read a short passage on an academic subject and then listen to part of a lecture on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the lecture. After you hear the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Read the passage about misconceptions in mathematics. You have 45 seconds to read the passage. Begin reading now.
Now listen to part of a lecture on this topic in a math education class. Misconceptions about simple notions in arithmetic are not readily given up.、Uh, so, for example, a child who believes that one fourth is larger than one half will not let go of this misconception when he or she gets back an assignment full of red correction marks. Uh, the child will let go of this misconception when he or she fully understands fractions. So, how do we develop this understanding? I think this situation is partly caused by the practice in many schools of teaching mathematics by rote. In other words,、uh, children are taught to to memorize a formula, to practice using that formula, and then go on to the next one. Children start to believe that math is boring, and work through problems without understanding the nature of the concepts.、Uh, so, what happens is that kids can work a problem only if they remember the formula. Using the rote method of teaching doesn't take into account the child's pre-knowledge or informal knowledge of mathematics.、Um, even a small child can tell the difference between a whole cookie and a half a cookie. So, using this informal knowledge is 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 a very important part of helping children learn fractions, or other math concepts for that matter. Teachers tend to forget they must put these concepts into daily situations that children can relate to. Using real objects, children can come up with the formula themselves, and having done that, the children learn and understand the formulas better. It's also true that teachers too often assume that children understand the mathematical symbols being used.、Uh, for example, the symbol for percentages. Unfortunately, too often that is an incorrect assumption. The professor describes the mistakes that are made in teaching children mathematics. Explain how these mistakes relate to the problems that children have in understanding fractions. You may begin to prepare your response after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. All right. So actually, that's it, and I hope that you did it well. And、um, if you haven't done this、um, yet, you can watch this video one more time, and you can replay this, and you can try it for yourself. Uh, so I'm encouraging you to practice, and for this, you can type your answer in the comments below the video. And I've seen some of my students、um, have done this before, and I hope that it's helpful because you will get feedback from me. I won't correct all your mistakes, but I will read your response, and 
um, I will try to evaluate this and you will see the score that you would get for your answer. Of course, you will write it down, but um, you need to imagine that you will be talking. But if you'd like to practice and you want to get speaking evaluation or writing evaluation for TOEFL, you can visit our website losangelesenglishschool.com and we have this service provided for you. Also, if you want to prepare for your IELTS or TOEFL, we also have IELTS and TOEFL preparation and you can check it out on our website. Again, uh, if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified of all our upcoming lessons. So guys, thank you very much for being with me today. I hope that this video was helpful for you and I hope to see you in my next lesson. Have a great one. Bye!